Hey guys, so today I thought I would talk about my favorite winter fragrances. These are the fragrances that I have been reaching for a lot over the past few months and anticipate continuing to do so until the weather starts to warm up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the fragrance that I have on today that I have been wearing probably for like the last three or four days straight. I usually like to change it up every single day. I have so many fragrances. I love so many that I really try to like vary it, but I've just been hooked, hooked on this particular fragrance. This is the Frederick Mall Promise fragrance. And I purchased this off of Violet Gray and it is so different to anything else that I have in my collection because it is, kind of sweet, kind of sour, but also like deep. Uh, let me go ahead and find the notes before I go on. So I'm on the site Fragrantica and they always have uh, an amazing sort of library of fragrances on here and they kind of uh, mention all the different notes and like the history and yeah, everything about it. Anyway, here are the notes. Top notes, apple, pink pepper and rosemary. And I think that's why I got this because if you guys are unaware, I just love apples. I love the actual fruit. I love the taste of them. And I do love the smell of them like fresh apples. But usually when apples are included into a fragrance, it's a very kind of synthetic, overly sweet kind of apple, which I'm not the biggest fan of. Um, but I thought if anyone could do it right, or at least the way I like it, it would be Frederick Mall. So those are the top notes. The middle notes are Turkish rose, Bulgarian rose, and clove. And the base notes are um, cypriol oil, uh, patchouli, labdanum, castorium, and ambroxan. And what I smell the most is the top notes, the apple, the pink pepper, the rosemary, and then the clove. And then all the base notes are just kind of like swimming in there. None of them really jump out at me. Oh, but it's just such an interesting, interesting fragrance. When I first got this and I first sprayed it, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it. Um, and sometimes fragrances that I don't like on me, I'll like as a candle. And so I thought, oh, am I gonna like this more as a candle? But the more I have worn this, the more I have fallen in love. It is just, it's mysterious, but it's not that kind of typical, like smoky tobacco, leather, kind of like deep, mysterious, smoky room kind of fragrance. It's a lot lighter than that, but there's still, maybe it's the clove that like gives it that depth. Oh, it is, it's just so interesting. So this is uh, the one that I've been wearing the most lately, and I definitely associate it to winter. A lot of my winter favorite fragrances are a little bit on the deeper side. They're less citrusy, they're less like white floral and bright. These are fragrances that are just a little bit deeper, maybe more gourmand, uh, maybe more smoky, things like that. So anyway, this is the first one that I wanted to mention. And while we're on the topic of Frederick Mall, let me just go ahead and throw Portrait of a Lady in there. Uh, I've talked about this fragrance a lot. This is the fragrance that introduced me to Frederick Mall. This is a fragrance that uh, my good friend, Stephanie Windsor, uh, turned me on to. She was like, this doesn't seem like a fragrance that you would like, you know, because I used to always just kind of gravitate towards citrusy light fragrances. But she was like, you have to try it. You just have to try it. And I love it. It definitely has a strong uh, rose scent in there, but let me go ahead and pull up the notes. So the top notes are rose, clove, raspberry, black currant, and cinnamon. The middle notes are patchouli, incense, and sandalwood. And the base notes are musk, benzoin, and amber. And I have described this scent as, I feel like it's the, the smoky underground bar version of a perfume, even though the rose is really prominent but there's something very deep, very mysterious about this. And it is, I don't know, it's sort of like, it's like the one night stand version of a perfume. It's just so, there's something very sexy about this and there's something very mature. Like this isn't a fragrance I feel like I would find on a teenager, let's say. It is a very complex, Oh, just like a mysterious kind of fragrance. And I just love it. And I'm so, so happy that Stephanie turned me onto this. And I've since been like going really, really hard with Frederick Mall uh, fragrances. So that is Portrait of a Lady. And this fragrance I've talked about quite a bit. This is the Harmonist Hypnotizing Fire. 
and I've described <laughs> this fragrance. I don't know what's wrong with me. Portrait of a Lady is like the one night stand of a fragrance. This is like the third date of a fragrance, if you catch my drift. It is very, very sexy, and it is slightly smoky, but it's slightly sweet. It's very, very enticing, and I find that even though there's like a depth to it, there's like a smokiness, it is incredibly like feminine in a very sexy kind of way. And I just love, love, love this fragrance. And I have the candle of this fragrance, which is incredible because it does have that smokiness. And then the candle has that kind of natural kind of sooty smokiness to it. Oh, it's just amazing, absolutely amazing. But let me pull up the notes for this one. Okay, so the top notes, pimento, so there's that spiciness. Uh, the middle note is Bulgarian rose, and the base notes are Madagascar vanilla, Indonesian patchouli leaf, and apopanox. <sighs> this one just is really, really intoxicating, and it's so seductive. That's what this fragrance is. It's very, very seductive. I feel like this is one of those fragrances when um, someone is wearing it and they walk by you, it's like, what is, you know, like, what is that? What was that? Like, I have to go ask that person what they were wearing. Oh, I love it, love it. So that's the Harmonist Hypnotizing Fire. And then the next one I wanna mention is, I believe I, I talked about this in my like all time favorite perfumes, but this is the Bond Number no. 9 Tribeca. This is a very sweet, warm, gourmand kind of fragrance. It is a little bit less uh, serious than the three I just talked about. It definitely has uh, like a brighter kind of lightness to it. So the top notes are cacao and hazelnut, middle notes are cedar, jasmine, and sambic, and the base notes are ambroxan, caramel, and moss. So on this site it says it's unisex, but I mean, I guess I could see this on a man or s smell this on a man, but I, I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit more feminine than masculine because it does have that sweetness. It does have that gourmand uh, kind of scent. and. The, the typically more masculine uh, notes are very uh, kind of overpowered by the other ones. So like the cedar and the moss, I smell a little bit of it. I think that's what keeps this from being too sweet, but it's not like I smell cedar or I smell moss like right up front. I definitely smell more of like the cacao, the hazelnut, the caramel. Mm, it's just really, really delicious. So this is another fragrance that I have been loving during the winter time. So this next fragrance, I actually have not spoken about since I received it. So Dior actually sent me this fragrance and this is the Gris Dior. And I remember getting it and thinking, I think it was sent to me like in the spring summertime. And I thought this is definitely one I wanna save for uh, like fall, winter or like winter, spring. It has um, like a depth to it, but it's a very kind of clear kind of fragrance. So it's not too smoky and heavy and sweet or gourmand. There is something very sophisticated about this scent. So for me, there is something very kind of winter about it, but there's a very kind of cool, cold, chilly, icy kind of winter to it. Like it's a late winter fragrance. So the notes, they're not actually broken out by like, uh, top, heart, or base notes, but the notes for this are rose, oak moss, patchouli, bergamot, cedar, amber, and sandalwood. And whenever I wear this fragrance, it definitely starts out lighter, and then as the day goes on, it gets deeper and deeper, where I feel like the sandalwood and the cedar and the amber, like typical base notes, those really start to like come out. And this fragrance, I would actually say, is unisex because the lighter, like the rose and the bergamot are very, very faint. It just keeps it from being too deep, but this is really a very like sophisticated and elegant kind of fragrance where everything just has like a lightness to it. Really been enjoying this one. And every time I wear it, I think of like just a really icy kind of day where there's maybe like a little bit of ice on bare trees, like on the branches. That's what I think of when I uh, put this Gris Dior on. So that is another winter fragrance that I have been loving. This next fragrance is a fragrance that I always kind of reserve for the winter, the fall, winter time, and that is Coco Noir by Chanel. This is, I mean, the bottle kind of says it all, the name says it all. This is a very deep, again, kind of like a mature woman kind of fragrance. 
and I know people who wear this all year round, obviously, but for me, I just really, really like it in the winter time because it is so warm. Okay, so the top notes for Coco Noir are grapefruit, bergamot, and orange. And you definitely get a shot of that when you first spray this uh, perfume, but it doesn't last, I don't think. I feel like you really hit the middle notes and the base notes um, pretty quickly. So the middle notes, rose, geranium, jasmine, narcissus, and peach. Base notes, patchouli, sandalwood, um, olibanum, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, tonka bean, vanilla, white musk, cloves, and benzoin. Yeah, I feel like I, I definitely smell the middle notes and the base notes uh, for like the rest of the day, basically. It's just those top notes I smell when I first spray it. And it's like, if you close your eyes, you can really, really catch like the grapefruit and the citrusy scents, but it fades very quickly and you're left with something much warmer, uh, much more like evening, uh, something deeper and a lot more sophisticated. And it's a really nice balance between the middle notes and the base notes. There are like, there's quite a bit of floral in there with the like rose and the jasmine. And then with like the sandalwood and the white musk and the base notes, like it's a really nice kind of balance between those notes. Mm. Mm -mm. Love Coco Noir. So that is another one I have been loving. And then these next two I talked about also in uh, my all-time favorite uh, fragrances, but these are the two Tom Ford fragrances that I've been loving, the Tobacco Vanille and the Ombre Leather. The Tobacco Vanille is, you know, it's exactly that. It smells like a mixture of tobacco and vanilla. And so uh, the vanilla really keeps the tobacco from being a little, you know, a little too serious. The vanilla keeps it kind of sweet and gourmand. And then the tobacco, which is um, sweet in its own way, but there's like a sourness to it. Like the vanilla just really rounds out the tobacco. And this is just such a lovely, I find this to be a unisex kind of fragrance. But this fragrance to me, it's so, um, it's so inviting. You know, it's like, it's kind of a friendly fragrance without being too sweet or too bright. This is like, I would love to have this in a candle and kind of burning. I feel like, you know, like if you were to open uh, your door and like greet guests, this would be a really inviting kind of scent to like lure people in. Mm, really beautiful. So that's tobacco uh, vanilla. And then ombre leather um, is really just kind of a fun fragrance. I really love the smell of leather and I have a lot of different leather fragrances in my collection, but this ombre leather is a little bit on the lighter side of the leather fragrances I have. There's Tuscan leather from Tom Ford that I also love. I could have mentioned that too. Um, that one's a little bit more serious. It's like a little bit more of like a crackling fireplace in an old library and you're sitting in one of those old leather chairs. Um, ombre leather is definitely lighter than that. It has a brightness to it and it's, Definitely leather. There's definitely a leather scent in there, but it's not too like musky. It's not like an old leather. This is like more of like a, a light, fresh kind of leather scent. So so this is like definitely an all year round kind of fragrance for me. Um, but because this is, I don't know, fairly new to my collection, I've really just been kind of gravitating towards it quite a bit. So that's the ombre leather from Tom Ford. And then just a couple more from Jo Malone. This I got in my Jo Malone advent calendar. And I really enjoy it. This is the Oud and Bergamot cologne. So it seems like all of the colognes in the deeper tinted bottles from Jo Malone are a mixture of like a light bright fragrance, a, a note with something a little bit deeper. So this is like a really nice mixture of Oud, which is deeper and typically more masculine and Bergamot, which is a really bright kind of citrusy scent. It is such a fun mixture of the two. And I think it's a really nice balance between the two as well. It's not like I only smell the bergamot at first and then it's just oud later. It's a nice mixture of both of them. And I feel like they just play well together. The oud kind of makes the bergamot a little bit more sophisticated. The bergamot makes the oud a little bit less serious. It's just a really lovely play on those two uh, main notes. And it's, yeah, it's really, really lovely. So I've been using this and then probably the 
perfume or the cologne that I've had in my collection the longest and the one that I always reserve for like the holidays and the winter time is this Jo Malone English Pear and Freesia. I have gone through one of these already. This is like my second or third bottle of this. There is something for some reason just really, really winter-esque about this particular fragrance to me. It's very holiday and then I feel like whenever I close my eyes and I smell this fragrance, I just picture like snow on top of like holly or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but it's very, very sweet. It's very, very bright. I would imagine some people probably like this in the springtime or the summertime. But for me, this is just very winter, very, very winter. And it's very, very bold too. I don't know if you guys have ever uh, tried this fragrance, but I feel like when I put it on, it's like a hi. <laughs> It's like it wakes me up and I feel like, you know, all of a sudden if you go out in public, you're like, you're the one kind of introducing yourself. It's like that kind of fragrance. It's very, very bold. It's very friendly. And it's it's another one that I think is very, very inviting. So that is it for my winter fragrances. I think I pulled out 10 for you guys. I could have, I could have kept going. I could have kept going. My perfume collection has gotten very, very extensive, but these are definitely the 10 that I feel like I've been rotating through quite a bit over the past few months. And let me know if you have any winter fragrances you'd like to recommend to me. I would love to hear from you. Please subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.